Information Reporter. Welcome. Hi, Mark. Great to be here, Jennifer. Nice to see you, Jeffrey. Hi. You, know, you, you really have to do a good job today because I know officially from the radio station that Jennifer is one of their favorite guests. Uh, and they had specifically requested that she be here more often. I'm, I'm sure they did, and I'll do my best. I, to uh, talk to, I, don't, I don't believe you. i got to make sure this is true. i got to go find course, somebody here. That is a Jennifer trait. She does not believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it to me. So, Mark, what's, uh, what's in the news today? Well, I wanted to talk about a recent case that was decided by our Supreme Judicial Court involving the Wage Act. We've talked about this on a number of occasions, but we have a very strict Wage Act law in Massachusetts, and... Uh, employers, entrepreneurs need to be aware of it because it provides for mandatory triple damages and attorney's fees if you violate the Wage Act. And uh, uh, so it basically requires wages to be paid on time or else. Um, there are even criminal penalties potentially. And the Act also prohibits special contracts that exempt employers from the requirements of the act. So you cannot enter into a written agreement with your employee that says even though the law requires that you be paid, you know, your wages within a certain amount of time, we're going to have a special rule that's just between us. That's illegal and it's a violation of the act. That must happen very frequently. I mean, obviously, if this act is in, put in place, and is there an industry that is typically at, at fault for this? I mean, I think of small but, businesses yeah. that are living on the cash of the business, the cash flow of the business, where they sort of say to people all the time, uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, can I slow down my payment, you know, a week? Can I pay you another week? Because they don't just slow down their accounts payable, they slow down their payables to their own staff. Great point, yeah. Answer no. And, con and the contractors who are not allowed to be contractors. Right. I mean, that, that's the whole related issue is um, it's almost impossible to have independent contractors under the current state of Massachusetts law, which is probably the most strict in the country, much stricter than uh, other states, more strict than the IRS definition of employees versus independent contractors. So it's... Um, you know, it's this is the show me the money state. It's a sh <laughs> show me the money and triple damages are, uh, you know, that's in attorney's fees and the triple damages are mandatory. So that's a big deal. Uh, now, our case that we're going to talk about today involves there was a written agreement between an employer and an employee. And uh, it was a, new, a Delaware company sort of based out of New York, hiring someone who principally worked in Massachusetts. And they had a, uh, they had a written agreement. And the agreement said that it would be governed and construed in accordance with the laws of the state of New York. And it also said that all disputes arising under this agreement or the employment relationship shall be resolved in the courts in New York. So those are the two things that were agreed upon. So uh, employer gets into financial trouble, stops paying the employee according to the complaint, and the employee brings suit in Massachusetts, not in New York, claiming that the forum selection clause is a special contract. Remember I said special contracts are prohibited? And so, therefore, the employee alleged it was unenforceable uh, because Massachusetts has uh, this strong public policy in its wage act, mandatory triple damages, and attorney's fees. So, uh, we always talk about how different judges decide the same case facts in different ways. And uh, here, the, uh, there was a motion to dismiss by the employer and the Superior Court judge wrote two different opinions. Two different opinions. Two different opinions. He, Is uh, that common? Is that common? Uh, fairly that? unusual, but he's, he was struggling with what the right answer was. And uh, so initially he denied the defendant's motion to dismiss 
um, based upon the fact that the choice of law clause, remember there's two things, choice of law and choice of form. The choice of law said New York law governs the contract. Choice of form says you decide disputes in New York. So first he said that uh, the choice of law clause uh, called for the application of New York law and that uh, under New York law they had their own wage act and uh, that, would, uh, that would conflict because it didn't provide for triple damages with Massachusetts law and therefore he concluded that the form selection clause was unenforceable and unreasonable. Then the defendants moved to reconsider and the judge decided differently saying that uh, uh, that enforcing the form selection clause was fair and reasonable uh, because there was no evidence of fraud uh, or um, duress or uh, anything that would make it invalid. Uh, 